I'm Bill from Iron Will, and I want to talk to you about wind drift of an arrow. What happens when you shoot in crosswind? As your arrow leaves your bow, it has the wind from the speed of the arrow, say 280 feet per second, coming at the arrow. But that crosswind, let's say you have a 16 mile an hour crosswind, what the arrow actually sees is the resultant of those two wind velocities combined. And what that would be is about a five degree angle of that wind of it would calculate to be 281 feet per second at five degrees. So as the arrow's coming off your bow and it gets this angled wind to it, what you have is more pressure on this side. It will kick this arrow out and realign it to the wind. So you might see it fishtail, you know, once or twice, but then it's gonna realign and be at this five degree angle to the target down there. So what happens then is, is it's going downwind. You just have this inline drag force that's pushing on the arrow. There's drag at the broadhead, there's drag along the arrow shaft, and drag at the veins. Now things you can do to reduce drag, you can reduce arrow diameter, say going to a micro diameter arrow. We've modeled arrows with broadheads on the front, same veins on the back, and we see there's about a 5% decrease in wind drift by going from a five millimeter to a four millimeter arrow. So for instance, if you're gonna get 10 inches of wind drift at some distance with five millimeter arrow, going to a four millimeter, that 10 inches would go down to 9.5. So now the big difference, you'll have to weigh that against the other advantages, disadvantages of four millimeter versus five millimeter. By increasing mass, forces mass times acceleration. If you increase the mass of your arrow, that component of sideways force is just gonna push your arrow less to the side as it's moving down range. Increasing mass will reduce wind drift, but it will also affect trajectory, so keep that in mind. The other thing you can do is shoot a smaller broadhead, for instance, that'll have less drag. You know, bigger, wider heads are gonna have a little more drag, which will create a little more wind drift. Also, broadheads that have flat surfaces on the back will have higher drag. You know, ironwood broadheads are designed with a bevel on the back edge to have very minimal drag in straight line flight with the broadhead. In general, shorter, smaller veins will have less drag, but there's a trade-off there with accuracy and stability. Our university studies have shown by reducing vein height by 10%, you can reduce drag by two and a half percent, but you reduce stability by 11%. So I still think it's a better idea when you're shooting broadheads on the front to have a taller vein, 0.5 inches high or higher, to have good accuracy and stability, even though a shorter vein would reduce drag. The shape of the vein also has an effect on drag. Veins that have a steeper front and a steeper or shield cut back tend to have higher drag than veins with a smoother front end and an angling back end to the vein. This particular profile keeps flow attached to the vein and minimizes drag, even though it's relatively large for good stability and accuracy. The number of veins is also a consideration. As you add more veins, you increase drag. We've modeled a complete arrow with broadheads on the front, veins on the back, and just changed the configuration from three vein to four vein. We saw with four veins, we get about 8% more total drag on the arrow versus three. Therefore, I feel like three higher profile veins is probably more efficient in getting you the accuracy stability you want without adding any more drag and weight and wind drift than you would need to. A couple of other factors that can affect wind drift are spine and bow tune. If you're underspined and have a lot of flexing of your arrow, that increases the drag and will increase wind drift. Now with the field point on the front, being underspined doesn't hurt accuracy very much, but with the broadheads, it's really gonna decrease accuracy with arrows flexing the whole way there, and it's gonna increase drag, drop, and wind drift. So you really wanna make sure you're optimally spined to a bit stiff with your hunting arrow setup. Also, if your bow's out of tune and the arrow is fishtailing as it goes down range, that's gonna greatly increase drag as well. That increased drag is gonna increase drop, increase wind drift, and really have less momentum when you get out there. So improving your bow tune can also reduce that drag and wind drift. Those are the factors that affect wind drift and the trade-offs for your hunting arrow setup. Hopefully this is helpful in helping you make the right decisions for you.